Hello. If you ask my mother how I got started in this field, she would probably tell you that I was planning spaghetti suppers in kindergarten. I was one of those kids. I was always organizing a parade, putting on a show in the garage, or putting on a um, backyard carnival to raise money for muscular dystrophy. But I was from a family that was very engaged in our parish and school. We were constantly working on projects together with people. We were building stage sets. We were putting coffee and donut out for the senior citizens. We were singing at nursing homes. I was even playing the accordion at nursing homes. Yes, we were a group of people who knew one another. We cared about one another. We had fun together. And we really n took for granted that all of these activities were part of our daily lives. As an adult, I became a professional event planner. And I realized that through my work, I was always trying to create that same type of experience from my childhood. Food, music, collaboration, celebration. And when an event is at its very best, an experience that helps to create connection and community and helps us to feel a sense of well-being that one can't really quite describe. This is the sense of well-being and this sense of quality of life that we all want in our cities, in our towns, in our neighborhoods. We have seen a decline in many of our cities, certainly here and in all of our cities. Crime has increased, poverty has increased. There's a new type of social connectedness from isolation caused by technology. And unfortunately, people often feel more isolated. But I am here to talk about the transformative potential of public events the opportunity to capture a moment of communal vision and to help that moment become a powerful engine of social change. I was the event manager for the World Games when they came to New Haven, Connecticut. We brought over 10,000 athletes who were intellectually challenged to Yale Bowl for the World Games. They came from 150 countries. And I realized that what we were really creating, more than these athletic competitions, were a platform for social change. That we were talking about accessibility, we were talking about acceptance, we were talking about education, we were talking about services for persons with disabilities, and far more than that. We were talking about a change in perception for all who attended the event, all who volunteered at the event, all who participated in the event, and so I realized that this event was a life-changing moment for me because I recognized the potential of these games to foster understanding, change outlooks, gather people around a greater cause, and most importantly, these world games celebrated the championing of the human spirit, not just for the athletes, but for every single person who participated as a spectator or as a volunteer. This is fabulous, fabulous stuff. And I have never looked at events the same way again. And now, as I move forward, I'm convinced that by using the non-threatening thre threshold of a public event, we can create a platform for cities, countries, participants, spectators, that reaches far beyond the event itself and creates not always the result, but the starting point for social relationships that will continue to mobilize people around collective action and drive social change. So each of our cities, all of our communities are unique. Think of your own cities and communities. Think of the opportunities and challenges that you have. There's crime, there's unemployment, people need jobs, there's cultural disunity. We all have needs in our communities. But now, think for a moment that by directly linking our community's needs through bridging activities, which are among various groups, with action-oriented goals to get results, we can begin to establish social capital. And what is social capital? In this instance, I'm referring to 
the development of ongoing networks, and an environment of caring and trust between individuals and within communities. This is so important for our communities to establish these kinds of social connectedness. So typically when you do an event, the event is at the center of the event model. But in this instance, if we put the community at the center, we completely change the dynamic of the event, and the event will evolve based on the needs of each community. Take, for example, an initiative around uh, nutrition and health, something important to every single community. <laughs> so if you launch a community garden at, in an urban site during a festival or during a special event, and you have vendors who are selling healthy foods, you have workforce development around culinary and cooking skills, and you are overall promoting healthier eating. So this is an example of creating sustainable social change. Well, at the same time, we're developing an ongoing volunteer base, we're doing urban beautification, and ultimately, we are creating a sense of healthier communities. So as we look for ways to program our events, large or small, and activities, the vision of the event will align with the experiences that can start to establish social connectedness through our various stakeholders. And many excellent programs already exist in all of our communities. We don't have to reinvent them. All we need to do is to really look at ways that we can collaborate for mutual benefit and that we can use the event as a vehicle for growth, support, exposure for the group, exposure for the cause, and ultimately the promotion of the social change through the vehicle of the event. So this strengthening of relationships and these development of networks for social trust, they have a far greater value than the event itself. The key is to develop ideas that can bridge across race, class, and ethnicity and go from informal to formal social relationships, addressing community initiatives that are sustainable over time. Let me give you an example that focused on building social capitals uh, across cultures. When the tall ships came to New London for op sale from around the world, they were greeted by first to eighth, to eighth graders. So every, cl every class in Connecticut adopted a country that was coming. And they learned songs and stories. They followed the sailors on Skype. For months before the event, they met with cultural, local cultural groups representing the visiting countries. So by the time the ships got here, they met all their virtual friends. They shared songs, stories, food, <laughs> soccer matches. This was a really great opportunity for these students, for the cultural groups, for the sailors to feel welcome, for the event and the inclusivity of the event. But really now, what matters is that every year, those same cultural groups work with those students, and they continue to create opportunities to share music and food and song and sports. And we really have created a way to continue to celebrate our blending of cultures, our new immigrants, and our continued theme of the tall ships, that the wind brings the world. So we continue to do this. It's sustainable over time. And yes, this was a massive event. But it was really massive. It was a million people <laughs> came to this event. But when you break it down, the event bridged youth and cultural groups, created social ties, trust, awareness that cut across ethnicities, programs and activities, music, song, dance, things we've all loved to do, that we still love to do, that we've always loved to do, this can fit in any size community. The key is to find those sustaining programs that last beyond the event itself and become integrated into the development of ongoing social relationships and understanding. Social capital as a means to establish social trust does not happen without face-to-face -face connectedness. It really needs, our, our cities are far from lost. And in my view, public events purposely designed to build social capital can actually help us to define and celebrate a new vision for our cities. 
We need to connect. And that's often what's missing. We need a human connection that can change perception about our cities and about the people in it. We need to come together and to celebrate and to share a moment and to create a mural and to build a sculpture. We need that human connection. Since the beginning of history, we have seen evidence of gatherings and celebrations, harvest dances, feasts, births, weddings, the cycle of life, and the emergence of cultures and folklore. They have helped give us a window into their world. And they've also helped us to understand our own world because at their very best, public events offer us a chance to define our current communities. And the presentation of events can, can really help us to inspire the roots of social capital development, trust, openness, communication. One of my favorite examples was the Thousand Voice Choir that came to the World Games to open the ceremonies in the Yale Bowl. This was really a thousand voices, and it was amazing, hard to, to line up, but, in, but incredibly forceful because it was all cultures, all ages, all classes, all socioeconomic backgrounds. And the members of all of these churches, through the experience of creating and participating in music, which requires interaction, coordination, and trust, we grew from there and began to hold annual concerts, picnics, and the greater understanding began to come out of this experience of diverse neighbors and a willingness to work together on greater issues and social concerns. Again, an event that can happen at any scale. So these, this, this establishment of these episodic social relationships, it really truly does have implications for our future ability to mobilize ourselves and others toward collective goals. I know it sounds like a simple idea, but outdoor events are attended by 102 million people each year in US cities and towns. Imagine that potential. The National Endowment of the Arts conducted a study that looked at the importance of events as creative placemakers, integrated into the community and providing education, employment, entertainment, enhanced quality of life, this is really valuable research. But I think what it also points out is what's missing in terms of social value and the untapped potential of public events. Take, for example, my next event, which is in Sandy Hook, Connecticut. And we're working on a one-year anniversary to introduce a transformative initiative to build compassionate communities from the tragedy that occurred there. We're promoting love, connection, and community for every child and family. And we're presenting an event that will begin to build informal social relationships that will eventually lead to programs and relationships to nurture and build communities that ease social isolation. So whatever the purpose of your event, symposium, TEDx talks, festivals, meetings, we can really start by looking at the breakdown of the stakeholders and then start to think about the potential collaborative networks that can be formed. We can then start to creatively design components to address social needs and build social capital for lasting change. There are infinite possibilities for new networks and connections. This doesn't have to all happen on a grand scale. One of my most memorable event experiences, an aha moment actually for me, was I was riding through the park with Ed, my tech director, on a golf cart, and we're checking the sound levels. And there was a little boy about four years old, and he asked us to give him a ride in the golf cart. And we looked around, we saw his parents, and they asked us to please give him a ride. He's a little boy with intellectual challenges, and he um, climbed in my lap, and Ed and I started driving around the park. And the crowd was smiling and waving, and parents took pictures, they're crying happy tears. And we took a moment, because I realized at that exact moment how important this moment was. I saw the communal vision, and I saw the potential of humanity 
to create a better community. Happy, accepting, loving, celebrating. I know that is why I believe strongly in the preservation and development of public events. The emergence of hope and optimism from the shared experience of joy is one of the most important ideas we can nurture in our cities and towns. So I encourage you to take these ideas back to your communities, engage in developing social innovation programs within your events, test the outcomes and observe the social capital that will happen in many manifestations. Because we now have the opportunity, perhaps even the obligation, to both our past and certainly to our future to reconnect the community-wide celebration with its grander public purpose. Thank you.